Mixing rock and roll with horror isn't always a good thing. For every trick-or-treat or green room, there's a rock and roll nightmare and terror on tour to sour the mix. Let's see what camp Uncle Peckerhead falls into. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights, part of the Kings of Horror Network. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, remember to give this video a like, share with your buddies across the electronic superhighway, click subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Please get the word out about this channel to new folks so that we can make this channel bigger and better. All week, the Kings of Horror Network is running a contest giving away a copy of my new trade paperback, Grave Trancers. A few lucky viewers are going to be receiving a copy of this book when it comes out on September 2nd. The final order cutoff is on August 10th, so be sure to let your comic shop know that you won a copy. In order to enter the contest, all you have to do is send an email to hello at kingsofhorror.com with the subject line reading, Give me that Grave Trancers and your full mailing address in the email. Once we get it, we will enter you in to be randomly chosen to receive a copy of Grave Trancers. I apologize, but due to the current global crisis, this is for U.S. viewers only. Again, the final order cutoff is August 10th, so you only have a couple of days to let your comic shop know that you want a copy of this book. More info is available down below. Uncle Peckerhead is a new movie out from Dread Central and Epic Pictures, on demand and digital download. It's also in select drive-in theaters. Uncle Peckerhead is a story about a three-man punk band called Duh and its dreams of rock and roll superstardom. After quitting her job, front woman and bassist Judy, played by Chet Siegel, her drummer Mel, played by Ruby and Collister, and frontman lead guitarist Max, played by Jeff Riddle, plan to go on their first road tour. When their van is repossessed, they find themselves in dire straits, desperate to find anyone to loan them a van for the tour. That's where the man known as Peckerhead, played by David H. Littleton, comes in. Living in his van behind the mall, not down by the river, Peckerhead is eager and excited to loan them the van. The catch is that he has to come along with them as their driver and roadie. Though they're hesitant to have this older end of middle-aged man accompany them on the trip, they need the wheels, so they agree, not knowing that every night, at midnight, Peckerhead turns into a monster and must feed on blood and flesh for 13 minutes. Once they find out, though, they're deep into their tour and must decide whether to press on with the mild inconvenience of having a murder and ghoul as a driver or leave Peckerhead behind and end their tour. Playing like a mix of Fido and Satisfaction, Uncle Peckerhead features a downright lovable cast of losers you can't help but root for to make it big in the cutthroat world of music. The film plays out in a fairy tale sort of way with the members of Duh risking it all in order to chase their dreams. Even before Peckerhead shows up, the age-old underdog premise had me as the three members of the band are likable and unique. The real heart of the film shows up when Peckerhead hits the scene. Littleton plays the character as wholesome as can be, despite the fact that he becomes a monster every night and is half the time covered in a thick coat of blood. While the predicament intensifies with every night the band is on tour, I was cheering for the band and Peckerhead to somehow find a way to survive and make it to that battle of the bands and get discovered by the big promoter. But while the story provides us with a whole bunch of likable characters, it doesn't shy away from the reality of the situation that people are getting murdered. The film could have easily gone the cartoonish route with the band and Peckerhead going on a world tour, leaving victims in their wake, and continuing to live that rock and roll dream without any kind of remorse or regret of the bodies piled up. Instead, the film plays things m more responsibly. It lulls the viewer in by letting them think this is a safe and kooky film, but ends on a note that is desperately serious and downright horrifying. I think some will be put off by the tonal shift at the end, but I think the cautious attitude Judy has towards Peckerhead all the way through 
is a consistent through way leading to a much more haunted ending than the boppy and quirky film that preceded suggested. Uncle Peckerhead has a lot of fun with the gore and blood. The over-the-top attacks perpetrated by Peckerhead are right out of Peter Jackson's Dead Alive handbook, with limbs being ripped off, heads and spines being pulled out of bodies, and blood spurting in every direction. Not that I know for sure, the film really does feel like an indie and grungy diamond in a rough, depicting an authentic look at an indie band on the road and trying to make it. The songs by Duh are catchy and fun, reminiscent of Scott Pilgrim's stage performances. Mixed with the gore, it makes for a treat for the eyes and ears for horror-slash-metal fans. While the film is relatively low budget, the strong performances by most of the cast and the exemplary gore really makes Peckerhead a crowd-pleaser. If theaters weren't shut down as they were, I could see it playing to a raucous midnight crowd. While the ending is bittersweet, I found the rest of Uncle Peckerhead to be downright adorable, full of likable characters doing wild and quirky things amidst all of that bloody carnage. That'll be it for today. Don't forget about the Grave Transfers contest. The info is down below. If you like this video, please pound that thumbs up button. Share the video with your social media addicted pals. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on mlmillerwrites.com. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for alerts to be the first to see my future videos. Thanks so much for your time, and take care. You're